to the car. Signed, Miranda, she's got to take my reporter. Next, she's got to take my reporter out. We showed up here at 5 o'clock in the morning. The current is too strong for us to enter with our engine. So we're just kind of dicking around. We'll try entering again at 8.30. We waited for the scheduled hourly bridge opening by making perfect pirouettes in the waterway. And then made our first transit through the lifting bridge. In caution, Got, got taken down somehow and then they ripped up the Amas. Now all we had to do was follow the big wobbly line that is this section of the ICW North and enjoy the sights and the sounds along the way. We decided to do this one because it only had one lifting bridge and the beauty about it are all these little islands, these tiny little islands all along the ICW. And now that we've done it, I think so that if the weather shit outside, lifting bridges are not a problem. What actually scares me now are the 65 footers, which technically are 10 feet higher than our mast, but they still scare the shit out of me. When they built the canal, they moved the mud on the side to build the canal, and then the vegetation took over and built these tiny little islands all along. Just hundreds of miles of little abandoned islands. If you even get distracted five minutes like I am right now for filming you showed yourself you've got 50 meters less to navigate if not you're screwed do we have a timer on for the water no we kept an eye open for what might be a good island to anchor alongside before nightfall. However, it was a little tricky to find a spot where we would be well outside the waterway. And we anchored right on time to make sure that we weren't sitting out in the rain. Good job, Ravi. Well, we want to walk the doggy, but it'll have to wait. We were very excited to visit this series of ICW islands, perfect size for walking Choco, and easily accessible when rowing over from our boat. Happy boy taking a long piss. How does he walk, eh, Choco? How does he walk? Ready to go back to the boat? This is a familiar sight since we've entered the US waters. Sitting and waiting for a northerly wind to pass us by. We could motor into it, probably make about two knots with our engine, but we don't want to. And so we waited until the wind turned. Okay, we found out at one meter, here it is. We're grounded. You're grounded, Robbie. Hmm? Yeah, we left too late, I guess. We should have left too late. Yeah. So we decided to do everything we could while the favorable wind was blowing. Well, we're still stuck. Until that chart plotter shows 1.1, I think we'll be stuck. Even heeled over, we were not able to move forward. Come on, kick up some wake. Make some wake for us. Come on, do it. You're not going to do it because the fisherman has to do that. No distress signals, but I don't think he has his radio turned in. We then realized that we should bring out the handheld VHF radio into the cockpit, but it was too late. There were already concerned cruisers making the call to the Coast Guard. So we let the Coast Guard know that we were okay. 
It's common here for cruisers to use sea tow and tow boat services, but we knew that it would only be a matter of time before we would be off. We keep on getting a gust and thinking that maybe that will push us off, but I think we might have to catch her out, or at least try to catch. We rode the anchor and chain as far out as possible, dropped the anchor in deeper water. Poor Choco had no idea what was going on. These are the waves we need! And then we started winching. hoisted the sails, and started the engine. Okay, a little bit. But we were only crawling along, like a snail over mud. The plan is to just wait until high tide, or until the tide comes up again, because I think we're at lowest tide, basically, right now. I think this is the worst possible time we could be trying to uncatch the boat or move her forward, because... But it must be a lower tide than yesterday, because we came in at low tide yesterday. Basically, we came in at around the same time. It was low tide, and we thought, uh, oh, the boat's not gonna, if the boat's not gonna touch now, then it's not gonna touch at all. But <laughs> the tide is lower than yesterday. So to make things a little more interesting, the windlass just broke. Yeah, the manual part of the windlass just broke. There with some lubes. We took off some of that high tension we had on the chain and began to take the windlass apart. Is it supposed to be so hard to get off? No. No. We could see what the problem was right away. Two tiny springs that engaged the clutch to the manual wheel one spring was broken, and we had generally worn out the manual components. You're trying to see if maybe it'll function with the one spring. Yeah, but I doubt that. Well, this last one is not meant to to operate manually the way we did. If we hook it up electrically, it might work. We could bring a battery forward. We see that it, it will click now. We could technically use it, but it's like super delicate. Yes. Yeah. I wouldn't put the pressure that we're trying to put on it, I'm trying to catch the boat up on it. The wingnut was also suffering from our constant abuse. Now we had to work together to get the rest of the chain up and to inch our way forward as the tide was rising. Eventually, our boat, Inez, did get over the small hump of mud. Okay, pointing into the wind. The problem is our windlass doesn't work anymore. I'm not feeling confident yet. We have like less than 10 feet of clearance. You standing on my shoulders. Next scare for the day, going under our first 65 foot bridge. We have triple and quadruple measured the height of our mast from the waterline. Unlike the measurements of our draft, which we were uncertain about and caused us to go around this morning. We had hurried so much to take advantage of this tailwind, and now the main helped us along to reach a comfortable five knots of speed. God, the houses. Strolling through the private, high end communities along the ICW. The alarms that we set went off and it was time to refill our leaky freshwater pump. Justine wants to see the whites of their eyes. She's driving so close to the fancy houses. It just doesn't like... It doesn't get water, better. It's still like... It doesn't get old, huh?
and now it was time to start thinking about settling down for the evening again. We were joined by dolphins. The next day, we resumed observing the majestic sights and sounds of the ICW. Yeah, but you would just see a thing that you would think is a dolphin not showing no, its fin. You can tell, you see big round object in the through. I was excited to spot a manatee as dolphins popped in and out of our wake. Who is that, Jogo? They knew your name. The final leg of our journey, for now, had us anchoring near Satellite Beach, where we planned to meet up with several Floridian friends. This anchorage seemed particularly active with wildlife. Out of them. Little nice animal, eh? Something already went after its tail. Oh, I, yeah, it know it knows I'm here. Nice spot to send himself. Focal crossing. This intersection is very pushy. Or I've noticed these intersections are quite pushy. 45 yeah. seconds. Well, not even. You, you have like 30 seconds. The anchorage is a little more shallow than the charts suggest, but we tiptoed behind the causeway and stayed here throughout some strong westerly, northerly, and easterly winds. Yes, when the southern wind blows. A little bumpy. A little bumpy and without the windlass. We're also inspired to lift our anchor and change sides. Doggy needs a little bit of help to stay warm. He's shaking. Was he shaking a moment ago? Well, he's always shaking when it's cold. Our boat is not insulated or heated, of course. Basically, we are unprepared for these temperatures. Every morning became a routine to stop the mold and the mildew. The day with a little moisture farming. <laughs> <laughs> moisture farming, is that what she calls it? Both nearby marinas claimed that we should go to each other's to buy water, but we ended up going to the one with more depth. Oh, yeah. Oh. oh. Let's get the shit out of me. Hi, big boy. Oh, my God. They're so fat. Look at it. It's... He's, the, he's the size of the dinghy. He's the size of the dinghy. He probably weighs 600 pounds, 600 kilos. What a big boy. God, look at it. Look at it. <laughs> look at this thing. It's like a floating sausage. Oh, he's got a blade. Yeah, they all, they all hit. Oh. He's amazing. We filled up our tank and our jerry cans for a mere $25. Yeah, yeah. I'm not happy to not have a working windlass. There's always, always something broken. One morning, the wind began to howl. It started out at 20, 30, 40, and then built up into the 50s.
Now we're gonna have a fucking shit explosion. <laughs> <laughs>